hello and welcome to the Witness Field and Space finale presentation. I would like to thank you and take a moment to recognize you for attending this event and for your continued support for the duration of the campaign. You are all here this evening because you have in some way contributed to the execution and success of this contest. The Win This Field and Space contest is a unique commercial opportunity for promising entrepreneurs that will award one individual $12,000 towards the first year of a new lease in the DDIA. In addition, the grand prize winner will also be awarded thousands of dollars worth of business services donated by our contest sponsors. A contest to encourage the development of new sustainable business, Win This Field and Space will help to foster a thriving downtown market in which both new and existing businesses will flourish. To begin, I would like to introduce to you our finalists of the Women's Field and Space Contest. Angela Binney, owner and head baker at Raindrops Cupcakes. Dave and Sandra Tunstead and Tanya Zanza, owner and operator at Sky's Clothing Boutique. I appreciate your enthusiasm and professionalism throughout the many processes of this contest. You are here this evening because you have demonstrated hard work and dedication. You should all be very proud of yourselves. I would also like to recognize our judges panel for their commitment to the contest. They were responsible for reviewing the initial submissions, for which we received more than 30 applications. From there, they narrowed it down to nine finalists who were invited to participate in the business development workshops. This number was further narrowed down to the two finalists we have with us here tonight. I would now like to invite our finalists to the stage um, in a moment. Each finalist will have the opportunity to conduct a three to five minute presentation selling their businesses to the judges panel one last time. Following both of the presentations, the judges panel will leave the room to discuss the presentations and choose one grand prize winner. Regardless of the outcomes, the finalist that does not walk away with the grand prize this evening will still be encouraged to pursue their business idea through programs available at the Northumberland Business Advisory Center and with assistance from the Economic Development Department at the Town of Cobra. So I would like to introduce Angela Binney, who will be the first presenter this evening from Raindrops Cupcakes. So my, hi, I'm Angela, sorry. <laughs> my children are gonna be handing out um, cupcakes to you all. And thank you, good night. <laughs> um, I'm not trying to bribe you, it's for uh, part of our presentation, if you could hold off to not eat them until the end of the presentation, I'll let you know when, I'd appreciate it. And they are not nut free. So there are nuts. If you're allergic, please avoid them. Okay? <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. My name is Angela Binney, as I just said. Three years ago, through a need for a creative outlet, I started my business, my business, Raindrops Cupcakes, where there's a cupcake for every occasion. We love to create edible works of art for all occasions and all budgets. I started baking with my mother, who's in the audience, in the red, over 40 some odd years ago, um, and I still use all of her amazing recipes. We are a family business with my daughter as my lead baker, Ashton, my husband, who couldn't come, um, he's our critical taste tester, my oldest son, Brock, he's a consultant for any of the gaming cupcakes we have to do, and my kind of general pack mule. And my other son, he's uh, my delivery man, as well as my muscle. I utilize everyone in the family. <laughs> um, but last but by no means least, my mother, who I get all the recipes from, and she is our biggest fan. Um, there has been a cupcake boom in the last decade or so. If you want to, sorry, Maggie, if you want to start that. Um, but now we like to do things a little bit differently here. We make everything from scratch. It's 100% edible. You choose, choose the theme and we will create a topper that will be an edible piece of art. We've made things like wedding rings, guitars, all sorts of animals. You can see there, a little turtle. Uh, numerous modes of transportation, even as far as a realistic heart with an LVAT machine hooked up to it for a thoracic surgeon. 
Um, we've had, we have so many amazing clients uh, with the greatest imaginations that give us the honor to be a huge part of their event and celebration. After the first year, we branched out to making cakes, which has made our creative canvas even bigger. Speaking of cakes, we did uh, do, we do an annual event for the Lake Ridge um, Hospital in Oshawa for the Disease Prevention Conference every year. And if you look carefully at the website, you'll see um, the only unappetizing looking cake we've ever done. And if you want, I'll tell you later, but I'm not going to tell the, show the judges, okay? So, but it's uh, very interesting. Um, at times I feel like a big kid, like I get to play with Play-Doh all day long and create everything as a career, but as well as being extremely blessed to have my family working alongside of me, I get to see the joy, the shock, and awe on the faces of every client when they see their special creation for the first time made specifically for them. It's just, it's an overwhelming feeling. Now, all her late nights, working in her shop, we have two little dogs that press their faces against the window and ask if we're going to go to bed. And so, from that, I always felt really guilty because I didn't give them any cupcakes, because obviously it's really not good to give, you know, dogs sugar. So I, I went to the web, found some recipes for dogs and, and cats, and we make pup cakes and itty bitty kitty cakes. And they're all gluten free because there's a lot of dogs and cats that are allergic to wheat. And they're edible. Like, I, I have them. Every one of my <laughs> members of my family has been forced to eat them. But they're actually pretty good. There's no sugar, no flour. They're great. So we kind of try to accommodate everyone, even our four-legged friends. Um, our main goal now is to bring our energy, our enthusiasm, our creativity, and our pure joy of life to the lovely Coburg area. I was born and raised in a small town, and I would love to be a part of this beautiful city, or town, I'm sorry. I believe that everyone should be able to have an amazing cupcake display or cake display at their events, you know, to astound your guest and to surprise the guest of honor, without having to take out a second mortgage. Finally, we're going to round out the presentation. This is where you get to eat the cupcakes, the best part, I'm sure. Um, so, if you want to take your cupcake, I'm going to show you. for that location 
whilst continuing to grow our business on the road. Today, just for clarity, we serve approximately 100 retirement homes and long-term care homes throughout Ontario. Many who are right in the North Humberland area, including Golden Plow, which we were at just about a week ago, on a Saturday, having an event for those who cannot get out and serve their own needs. We had a great day with people in wheelchairs who are challenged, but more importantly is, is that it brought joy to their face to have us involved in their business. And it allowed those people in that home to actually purchase a piece of clothing that was available to them and made their day. Today, we are in Eva Pickering. It is a retirement home. We chose uh, Diva Pickering today, and it was interesting because we had a fashion issue there. So ultimately, the average consumer in that age group, in that home, is 75 to 103 years old. And we served many of them today, and we had eight very grateful uh, people who got dressed up in the clothing and became models for an afternoon. We're all about exciting the mature clientele when it comes to our retirement home business and long-term care home business. But our store is a little different. In our Ajax store, we don't just carry all the J. In fact, that's more of our business on the road. What we do in our store is offer French dressing jeans, J. We offer parsley and sage. We offer various brands that are actually meeting the needs of women that are 30 and above. And more importantly is, we also serve those from a size 6 to a size 24. And we also serve those from a small to a 3XO. So we don't miss out on any clientele that has a need that, you know, they need clothing. What's unique about our business is three years ago when we began our business and the store, we didn't do a lot of marketing. Our business flourished from word of mouth. It was one person walking into our store and saying to somebody else, have you seen the gem of Ajax? We now actually have a marketing campaign in the Ajax Pickering market that specializes in talking about the gem of Ajax. We have clients, we have a file folder box of probably 500 clients that are actually served by our store today and love the brands we carry. More importantly than that, if someone were to come into our store and say you don't have a size that is in X color, we will go about getting that product for them. Our business is all about service. Our business is all about value. We discount every single item in our store by a minimum of 5%, and when we can buy deals, we pass that along to our client. We do not gouge on price. We know that nobody wants to overpay for price, and I'll just use an example, and we can share this with everybody. We're in what's called the Buzz Magazine. We've been supporting Buzz since pretty well the inception of the magazine, and it's simply indulge your passion for fashion. Come on over to size will help you out. And that's all about our business. What's interesting about us is we want to come to Coburg because your demographic's perfect for our business model. We have been in town for the past, since April 30th, since we began our journey with Maggie. And uh, we have actually been back in town every single week working with Audrey's in town, speaking with uh, the Gentleman's Clothing Store, speaking with Brittany and Rowe, speaking with many of the other retailers in County Town, who have all said, oh my God, we need you in this town. The reality is, we believe we bring the best value to the marketplace related to women's clothing, because we are very aggressive in what we do. I guarantee, that if you were to visit Skies, whether it's in Ajax or Cobra, the one thing that I will tell you about Cobra is some of the brands that we carry in our Ajax store would not be represented in Cobra 
because of the Aaliyah Tangier store in town. But Nygaard, okay, brands would be represented. Definitely many other brands would be represented in our store. And more importantly is we have expanded even our Ajax store to include accessories, including Hillhorn Pottery, which is a potter out of Cambridge, Ontario. We have included various product lines. We do jewelry, we do scarves, we do all kinds of accessories. And we can fit a lady from top to bottom. And we are very proud of the way we go to market, the way we market ourselves, and more importantly is the offerings that we offer the client. So with that said, I'd love to have a second store. Coburg's a great market. We actually have chosen space at number 29, which basically is an old urban lot space. We've met with Jane Kessler. We've asked all of the questions of Jane and her husband about the space. And we actually, in fact, she was hoping to be here this evening because she sees us as a value to your city or your town, whatever. North Humberland needs a good value brand in town as size will bring it. And that's why we're here. And we appreciate the opportunity to be here for that reason. Thank you very much. All right, I would like to thank all the finalists for your presentations. And I would now like to invite the judges panel to exit the room to proceed with selecting the grand prize winner of the Women's Field and Space Contest. But first, this would not be possible without the support and funding provided by our generous contest partners. The North Northumberland Community Futures Development Corporation, the Town of Coburg, the Northumberland Business Advisory Center. This project is made possible by support and funding from the Eastern Ontario Development Program through the Federal Economic Development Agency for Southern Ontario. I would now like to invite Deborah McCarthy, Town Councillor to the stage, to say a few words on behalf of the Town of Coburg and as a member of the Downtown Business Improvement Area Board of Management. Thank you, Mandy. And I'm so excited to be here. Wonderful presentations. And thank you as well for seeing the process through. This was a new experience for the DBIA. Not possible without all of the partnerships mentioned by Maggie. I actually was able to attend some of the workshops on small business, which I found extremely interesting because uh, as a member of the DEIA, and I'm a counselor, the town council and the DEI executive, all of us in um, business know that we need to constantly work on our game. And that hat may not be quite well known in the community. I was married to a contractor, small business, managed customers, marketing, all the compliance. So I also want to recognize the family members here tonight because guess what? When you have a small business, it, it usually is 150% effort by everybody in your family. So bravo to all of you coming out tonight. And also, thank you for the DBIA members that came out. Um, it is a collegial place, and I feel that as we move forward, downtown Coburg is going to have a resurgence, and a lot of it is building the relationships among the business owners, the different types, and the DBIA executive has a lot of things in place to, to do that, so I'm very, very excited about that. We have a downtown revitalization plan. We have Community Investment Ventures Initiative that will look at helping uh, property owners. There's just a lot happening, but the heart and soul is the businesses on the street and meeting the needs of their customers. I do want to recognize uh, the, uh, the town staff that helped out. One has gone off because she's a judge, but it's the Economic Development Department as well that helped uh, partner on this. And our, um, our board um, member chair, Randy, is, is off, uh, deliberating as well. But all in all, uh, a wonderful, wonderful project. Uh, we thought at the beginning when it was launched, no matter what the outcome is, this is win-win for everybody, uh, for downtown, for those involved. And we've had a wonderful uh, time.
time with Maggie at the helm. You've done a great job. Uh, so, and Maggie's from the area, so that was wonderful too. But lastly, because I don't, I'm not sure when everybody's coming back, but there is an incredible table of food over there, prepared by the chef of 92 King Street, one of the sponsors, Andrew Stewart. I've had some of them, but I'm going to rush over and have some more while we're waiting because it's excellent, excellent food. So thank you, and we'll be in cake pretty soon, too. Thanks very much. Thank you, Deborah. Finally, I would like to recognize our contest sponsors who have shown support for the DEIA through the contribution of their services to our grand prize winner. Bentacore Painting, who will provide painting services to the winner. Paints and More, who will provide paint and supplies. Covert Tax and Accounting, who have offered their bookkeeping services, tax preparation, and financial advice to the winner. Cortha Credit Union, who has offered to create a comprehensive banking package customized to meet the needs of the contest winner. Beyond Signs and Design, who have offered printing and signage to the new business. Effective Graphic Solutions, who have contributed their graphic design services. 92 King, who has supplied catering to all of our contest events. And finally, the Concert Hall at Victoria Hall, who have offered this beautiful venue for tonight's event. We offer you our sincerest appreciation. I would now like to invite to the stage Andrew Hall, Business and Events Coordinator, for one final word before we make our much anticipated announcement. Thank you everybody and welcome. Some great presentations from our contestants tonight. Um, maybe I'd like to quickly take you through the process, how all this came about and where we ended up. Several months ago, um, Kevin Narraway um, from the Economic Development Department at the town of Coburg, um, Teresa Rickerby, who at the time was the chair of the Coburg DEI, who's now a counselor, and myself, we went up to Uxbridge because we heard about this Win This Space contest. And we wanted to learn a little bit more about how it worked and what sort of successes they saw. And what we found was a program that they may or may not have been prepared for, um, but certainly several, business, uh, several businesses opened as a result of the contest. And we thought, gosh, you know, no matter how we go about this, we can't really lose because of the uh, fantastic publicity that, uh, that Uxbridge got as a result. So, um, we, we sent out these, um, the, the call for applications. We received over 30 applications for the, for the contest. Our judges panel narrowed that group down to about nine, we'll call semi-finalists. And uh, that was, there was a set of criteria and we all spent a great deal of time reviewing those applications to come up with that shortlist. And then, um, those nine were invited to attend a series of workshops that were hosted by the Business Advisory Center for Cumberland. Believe it or not, only three of those nine showed up to the workshops. And we thought this was a great opportunity, and, and here we had only three. Now, upon reflection, we understand now that it takes a certain type of person to take this sort of thing seriously and really put everything they've got into the process. And we're sort of happy that we had the three semi-finalists show up that did. We ended up now with two finalists through the process, and we're very happy with those final two. We think these two businesses would be real assets to the downtown business community. So I'm going to talk about successes. First of all, of course, is the winner. The winner uh, will be successful by uh, simply by winning a contest, but also by having an opportunity to have a, a business in the downtown for at least a couple of years. Um, the second thing will be the runner-up. Believe it or not, the runner-up is still going to be seeing some success because they've gone through the process of developing a rock-solid business plan. And we've seen financial viability in these plans, and we encourage whoever the runner-up is to pursue that. Um, we also want to talk about some of the spin-offs of this program because there's a lot more value to the program than just having a new business. One of the great stories that came out of this was um, the story of a young man who's here with us tonight. His name is Cash Chibo. And uh, he submitted a plan. Now he's seven years old, or was he seven at the time anyway? And uh, what a great little application he put in. His idea 
was for a social enterprise of sorts whereby people, underprivileged people, could trade up their clothing. Um, and, and there were some other elements to his application as well that we thought were fantastic. And we couldn't qualify him because of his age, but we still felt it deserved some recognition. So what we did is we contacted the chief of police here in Coburg, and we made the connection there because we understood that Cash one day would like to maybe join the police service. So, they got together at Cash's school, the police uh, brought in the cruiser, and Cash got to be police chief for the day. Now, the, the great success about this is not only recognizing the young person in our community that will hopefully contribute over the long term, but also we got great publicity through the process um, in, uh, in the media and uh, front page of the paper, that sort of thing. Everybody loved the idea that the Cash was interested in serving the community. And that's really what this whole thing is about. It's about businesses in the community promoting other business, promoting ideas, and drumming up more success. Um, so I understand actually that Cash's parents have taken a lease on a vacant downtown space. And they will be pursuing an enterprise of their own, I believe it's a special occasions business. Um, and that sounds really interesting as well. So we've already got business started as a spin-off to this. Uh, so I want to say thank you to Cash. Of course, Maggie already mentioned our partners and sponsors. This program has enabled various groups within the community to come together uh, to sponsor our event. We didn't have to go and knock on doors. People came to us and said, how can I be a part? So we're very grateful to all the sponsors we heard tonight and everyone that didn't make it uh, for their contribution as well. Um, the, the program itself is a success because we do have two really good finalists, um, but also because it helps us to fill the vacancies in our downtown community, which are um, problematic, and it, we think that this process is a great way to deal with it. It's a great way to shed some positive light. First and foremost for us as the DBIA, this is about good publicity. This is about showing the community that we're engaged, showing the community that we're concerned, showing the community that we care and wanting to be the best that we can be as a downtown community. Um, and none of this would have happened were it not for a, uh, a special individual who um, has really sort of put all this together for us. Uh, I want to ask Maggie to come up on the stage. project, um, <laughs> I said, there's no way I'm going to be able to pull this off myself as coordinator of the DEIA, um, so we're going to need to hire somebody else. And the board said, okay, we'll hire somebody else. So we brought in Mandy, and she has been spectacular. I could not have asked anything more of her. Our board could not have asked anything more, and COVID should recognize her office. Sky 
made up $12 million, and she actually was the namesake of our business name. And today, the Sky's Clothing Boutique, and soon to be Colbert's Sky's Clothing Boutique, we truly appreciate it. At the same time, I certainly hope Raindrop comes to Colbert. Yes. You are an incredible business. I think that we never competed with each other, but we respected each other's business, and we appreciate what you bring. We hope you join us in Colbert. Go ahead, sweetie. There you go. Great job. Grab that.